And then you, you son of a bitch. Such a dick. You're lying. Psst, Thomas, over here. Hey, Frank. Thanks for filling up the dumpster. <laughs> I wish that was all I was doing here. I'm trying to stay out of sight. Looks like Morgan will be at the post office all day. Listen up. Jack and I cooked up a little plan. I'm sure Morgan will be gone soon. But mm -hmm. I gotta get out of here now. You haven't seen me. Top of the Monday Break. morning, P.O. We're starting this week with a warning from Lucinda. P.O. Lucinda? Pet Hi, Jack. Oh. KNW6 TV crew was filming in P.O. yesterday with Connor Bryce. As a big fan, I just had to ask him for an autograph. He oh. asked me for my name, but he kept calling me Linda. Even after I corrected him twice. Isn't that just rude? Not really. Well, that's a bit rude. Well, it's low rude, Linda. but not really. I, 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 I Lucinda, of course. The weather prediction for today, bright but chilly. Enjoy your day and the music. Oh, Thomas, hello there. Hello. Could you be a sweetheart and bring that over to me? No. Uh, of course. Oh, careful now. Robert cleared most of the snow, but it's still a bit slippery. <laughs> Thank you so much. Taxi, if okay. only I still had the balance and agility of my feline friends. Oh. Oh, and good day to you, of course. Meow. <coughs> Well, if it isn't... Uh, uh, Mortimer, right? Right you are, Thomas. You're Mortimer's favorite mailman. Oh, I got to meet, uh, Genevieve and Mortimer. <laughs> well, the feeling's mutual. You're my favorite cat, Mort. Mortimer. <laughs> right, Mortimer. Reassigned so, mail. Reassigned. what do you have for me today, Thomas? Just a letter. Let's see. Don't open your mouth. How are you ripping it while holding a cat? Hmm. <laughs> this sounds interesting. Apparently, I need to make a few copies of this letter, and if you send this letter along with five dollars to the first six people on this list, your name will be added to the bottom. Soon enough, your name will rise to the top. Then many people will send you five dollars. No, stop. You will earn lots of money with one stop. small investment. No. Oh, what a great idea. No. What do you think, Mortimer? That's a scam. Uh... Mildred, that's a classic chain letter scam. Don't fall for it. No one ever got rich off of one of those. Well, except for the post office. <laughs> Are you sure, Thomas? They make it sound so easy. It's a scam. Trust me on this, Mildred. If you've seen one pyramid scheme, mm -hmm. you've seen them all. Hmm. $30 is quite a bit of money. I'll think about it. Don't think about it. Just don't do you it. do that, Mildred. See you at Moe's tomorrow night? Probably. Bye, dear. Meow. And I think that's, uh... I don't know who she is. I was just talking to her. Hi there, ladies. Oh, Hi, Thomas. Beth. Hello, Thomas. Well, this looks cozy. Well, this looks cozy. It is. You just dropped in at the good part. Hmm. That's free to see and need to find out. Oh, the good part? That's my favorite part. <laughs> well, I actually really need to get moving with the New Year's party coming up. Okay, so before I leave, we had this awesome girls' night yesterday thanks to Beth. Oh, it how did it go? Hilarious. When I first saw where we were going, my brain went, oh my god. And when the guy showed us what we were going to do, my brain went, oh my god! And when we started, it was so yuck, but also so cool, you know? 
I've I... never done anything like that before, and I love that I got a chance to find out. But then again, I doubt that I will ever try it again. <laughs> what did you do? Ah, uh, yes, the girls' night. What did you end up doing? What did you end up doing? We made haggis. Oh, gesundheit. <laughs> I said haggis. It's a Scottish dish made from a sheep's liver, lungs, heart, and suet, Ugh. all stuffed into a sheep's stomach. It's this fascinating traditional gourmet staple stemming from the 15th century. Would you believe? Poems have been written about it. That sounds whack. <laughs> I, I mean, it probably sounds good, but... Meat on top of meat? Sign me up. I have some leftover from last night, Ooh, if you're interested. <laughs> it was so gross. I'll have nightmares about zombie sheep for weeks. <laughs> zombie sheep. <Bleh. laughs> okay. It's okay, I love her. Too, but I really have to sort out this delivery ASAP. A marine will go bananas. Talk soon. The A and the A. Yes. Evening, Beth. Bye. Bye, Kay. Well, now I really should get back to the grind as well. Those New Year's price reductions aren't going to fix themselves. Now, wait up, Beth. What did I want to talk, talk to her something. about something, though? Oh, what's on your mind? It's about uh, Saturday and the whole parcel situation. I told you, I simply wanted to get that parcel out to Daniel as soon as possible. Okay. Since we didn't get to exchange gifts over Christmas this year. Yeah, but... It's nothing, really. Now, if that's all, I really need to get back to the bookstore. Sorry, store. I just, uh... Beth, come on. You have been acting a bit strange lately. What do you mean? Are you sure there's something wrong? Are you sure there's nothing wrong? Okay. You've got me. Can we sit down here for a bit? Or Beth. Heavens, I do feel a bit... caught out. But I have to admit, it does warm my heart to know that I cannot fool my friends. Mm hmm Well, out with it, Beth. You see, it's my eyes, Thomas. I have glaucoma, which means my optic nerve is deteriorating. I found oh, no. out a few months ago. Oh no. Have you told anyone about it? I haven't told Emily yet. Daniel knows. It's not that bad yet, but it's not getting any better either. The thing is, this kind of condition happens... slowly. And I haven't been the fastest in getting it treated, but they can stabilize it. That's oh, why I wasn't able to fix the parcel on my own last Saturday. And that's why I'm starting to miss a few details here and there when I'm in the store. Or asking for peas instead of beans at Christmas dinner with all of my friends of all places. Don't be silly, those are honest mistakes. I mean, yeah, but... Uh, uh. I had no idea. Is there anything we can do to help? It's sweet of you, but there is no need to treat me any differently. I've been going about my business as usual, first and foremost, because the deterioration is so gradual. Until I couldn't really do the little things anymore. Things like reading small print are getting difficult. Which was a painful thing to accept at first. Working in the bookstore is starting to give me more issues than I'd like. Getting older. It's a strange thing, isn't it? It's like that Robert Frost I'm poem. like feeling pain from the this. The afternoon knows what the morning never suspected. <sighs> Doesn't mean I wouldn't mind taking a little nap in between from time to time, though. Is that why you're really leaving for Is Georgia? Is this why you're really leaving for Georgia? I mean, will you be able to take care of yourself in the long run? It is a big part of why I'm leaving, yes. But at the same time, it isn't. Hmm. How's that? What I'm trying to say is, when you really look at it, in the end, it's not all bad. Yeah. You see, every limit is a beginning as well as an ending, as T.S. Eliot puts it. For me, there's really no use dwelling too much on that limit. I can't change it anymore at this point anyway. 
But I do have a choice in how to deal with it. Plus, Georgia has a lot to offer museums, social clubs, and most importantly, my family. That's a good one. If you look at it like family. that, getting older may still feel like a cursed time, surely. But I also see each new year as a gift. An opportunity to start new adventures, explore, and have more fun. You can't take something like that for granted. I like that mindset. I had a feeling you'd understand. Hey, I'd make a pretty poor friend if I didn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I guess I really should be going now. Check it, Thank you once again, Thomas. I do feel better now that it's out. You're a good friend. Any time, Beth. Bye now. Okay, are we rolling? We're rolling. We're rolling. Okay, let's get this in one. I'm freezing my ass off. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when Chekhov saw the long winter, he saw a winter bleak and dark and bereft of hope. Yet we know that winter is just another step in the cycle of life. Mm -hmm. In the summer months, this lake is bustling with activity. As the local fishermen cast their rods, the tourists plunk down hard-earned cash mm. to rent a boat and spend a delightful sun-soaked day on the water. Not so during this particularly harsh winter, however. Now the watery heart of Providence Oaks finds itself completely frozen over. No, uh, that I thought it was good. as an analogy because now we're sort of implying that residents have grown cold-hearted during the winter. I didn't doesn't get work, up like that. Doesn't scan. Yeah, and um, what was with that Chekhov stuff? I don't get it. Chekhov, like from Star Trek? <laughs> all right, all right. Let's try something else. Wait, hey, wait a minute, Mister Postman. Please don't sing at me. How's it going? <laughs> Oh, don't mind me. I wouldn't want to interrupt. Uh-huh. Hey, listen, how about I ask you a couple of questions on camera? Oh, boy. Just simple stuff uh, about the town. Sure. Sure, I'd be happy to. Great. Just uh, move over here. Are we both in the shot? Yeah, that's fine. This'll be great. The lake is a backdrop. Perfect. Let's go. <clears throat> All right. This is... His name is Thomas Weiss. I knew that. Thomas and I go way back. No. <clears throat> As the local mailman for truly countless years, Thomas Weiss knows Providence Oaks like he knows the back of his own hand. So, Mr. Weiss, how would you characterize this small, cold town and its warm, warm inhabitants? Oh, that's a tough one. Hmm. That's easy, Connor. Oh, uh, whether you knew or tell or not what Claire is. Hmm. The eons. No. In the eons I've been the local mailman, I've learned one thing. This gorgeous little lake town of ours cannot be summed up in a single song bite. You know what? That sounds good. Cannot be summed up in a single soundbite. But one thing for certain. But one thing's for certain. Uh, when the low weather sun hits the water, uh, if you've seen the view from the watcher. Anyone who's ever seen the views from atop the mighty watchtower knows. This is the most beautiful place imaginable. Whether you are or whatever you face. Uh... And wherever you are or whatever you face. This is, uh, here a goodbye never has to be a farewell. Here a goodbye never has to be a farewell. And cut. Ah, oh, that's so sweet, Thomas Weiss. Completely unusable, but sweet. I know I've got goosebumps. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that went well, kind of. Now, <laughs> let's scout out the establishing shots at the far end of the pier. Let's go, Connor. Aye, aye, Captain. Gabe, 
you can take five. My advice would be to take those five in the van, to reduce the risk of any further ass freezing off incidents. Noted. Thanks, Elsa. I'm sad. They, they didn't want to use that. Uh, Mr. Weiss. Uh, Thomas, sir? Hi, Gabriel. Yes. What's up? Uh, just that, well, we'll be ringing in the new year right here in Providence Oaks. Mm -hmm. So, my mom is shipping over my tuxedo. <laughs> Can you make sure it arrives okay? She says she clearly marked the package Serrano Room 2. Oh, of course. Mailman's promise. Uh... So, how did you and Ilsa like the movie? Oh man, it was beautiful. Heavy stuff, though. At the end, Ilsa totally had tears in her eyes. And, oh. well, so did I. <laughs> there is something else I wanted to ask you about. What is I this? I'm curious. How did you, like, woo your wife? I, you don't want to hear such boring long stories? Oh, uh, you know what? High school sweetheart sounds cute. Uh, it's pretty simple and cliched. Uh, she's my high school sweetheart. Uh, I took her to the fairy tale dance. We snuck off to smooch under the bleachers. And the rest is ancient history. But I'm guessing that doesn't help you with what you really want to know. Uh, you want to know if you have a shot with Lisa, you should make a move. You want to know if you have a shot with Ilsa? Shh, keep it Ilsa, down! Ilsa, sorry. Don't mention her name! <laughs> but yeah, I'm terrible at that kind of stuff. Aww. It's just... You seem like a wise man, wise man. <laughs> I'd really appreciate your advice. Well, okay then. My advice... Is to go for it, is to follow your heart. You know, telling him to go for it would be probably... Because we know she likes him. Is to go for it. You like her, a lot. And it's pretty obvious that the feeling's mutual. Wow. And is that your definitive judgment? Yeah, absolutely. That's the best I uh Absolutely. That's the best I can do. All done. <laughs> hey, what are you two schmoozing about? Nothing. Oh, we were discussing the delivery of Gabriel's New Year's Eve attire. Excellent. Now start the engine, Gabriel. We're rolling out pronto. Man, a lot of it's cold today. On it, Mr. Price. Thanks, Thomas. You've been a huge help. You're welcome. So, take good care of that tux, yeah? Will do. Bye, folks. Mm. Mm. Hey, Thomas. Have you seen Jack? Nope. I haven't, Frank. How did it go with Morgan? Didn't happen. Yet. But I need Jack to pull it off. Oh, what I'm off? sitting duck right now. I'm toast if Morgan suddenly shows up. Yikes. Maybe I can help out? Good afternoon, Ooh. gentlemen. Sorry for interrupting your conversation. Oh, no. Mr. Coleman, I see you've managed to be present at the job position you're currently holding. I think it's mm. time you and I had a little chat. Oh, no. Inside the office. Mr. Morgan, oh, it's boy. so good to see you again. He's in trouble. A little chat sounds uh, wonderful. But I'm afraid there's an extremely urgent parcel I have to deliver right now. So stay put, and I'll be back in about 30 minutes. No, you won't. You can stay right here, Frank. I'm sure Mr. Weiss would be happy to deliver that package for you. Right, Thomas? I've got a better idea. Let's just go to Moe's, have a few beers, and talk it all over like adults. <clears throat> uh, uh, excuse me, sir? Mm -hmm. Hi. Hello, I, I heard you were looking for a guy in a light ah. blue shirt with a mustache Good check. to purchase illegal fireworks in the parking lot of the post office. Well, you found him. Illegal fireworks? Who do you think I am? Sir, you don't have to keep your guard up. Mm -hmm. Frank and Thomas here both know me very well, and I'm sure they won't tell a soul about what you're doing right now. Oh, no. So, what will it be? I've got rockets, Roman candles, fountains, sparklers. I even have barrages that'll give you a fireworks extravaganza that you won't ever forget. <laughs> I think there must be a misunderstanding here. Please, don't put Mr. Morgan in this position. If people walk by and see this, they, they might snitch on him and get him into trouble. He could even lose his job over this. True. Don't you go inside and... Um... 
I don't think it's interested in buying fireworks. Yeah, why don't you go inside so you can do your dealings without all these prying eyes around? I'll tell you <laughs> what will happen now. I'm going to get in my car, start the engine, drive home, and pretend I did not just spend three days in Providence Oaks for absolutely nothing. <laughs> Sir, if you take a left at the deer statue, you'll eventually pass my barn, and I can feel your trunk there in just one minute. Do you have cash on hand? <laughs> yeah, Tell I love him I'll be a back lot. Next year. Frank Coleman, your luck will run out one day. I wouldn't bet on it. Tally ho, Morgan. Oof. Will Morgan believe Jack was the one offering fireworks? Oh boy, oh boy. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> if you can't stay in the heat, stay out of the kitchen. Thanks, guys. I owe you one. We did our best. We saved his ass. Monday afternoon. Who calling? Why? Uh, hello? Evening, Thomas. It's Maureen. Oh, hello, Mo. Hi, Maureen. If you're looking for Emily, she's at the motel right now. I, I was actually looking for you, Thomas. I, I don't know what to do with this Nancy situation. Mm -hmm. I get so worked up just thinking about it. And that usually gets in the way of doing the right thing, you know? What are you doing? I need to talk to someone who's a bit more emotionally detached from the situation. Okay. How can we help you? Mm. How can I help you, Maureen? Simply put, I don't know if I should give in to that Nancy Carlisle and her overpriced snacks, or tell that woman to take a hike. But then we'll end up with a lackluster New Year's Eve party. Risk New Year's Eve party without snacks? Easy choice for me. A party... You know what? Yeah, we'll do this. A party is about having a good time with people you like. Who cares if the snacks aren't great? That's what I'd like to think as well. But I just don't like to disappoint people. Well, stop being a people pleaser. Mm. People will understand that you're lying. Mm. It may not be the perfect party, but people will understand that you had to draw a line in the sand. Hmm. I think you're on to something there, Thomas. I'm not yet totally sure what I'm gonna do, but at least my mind's at Why not make now? something Thank at the work, please? And advice. You're a doll. <laughs> it, it takes one to know one, Maureen. Uh, Alright, she just hangs up. She just hangs up directly like, alright, I'm done here. Let's see, what is our agenda? Okay, so we have the New Year's Eve party tomorrow, I believe. Hmm. No, we'll watch TV. For the first time. We've never watched TV. I hate to admit it, Klaus, but if it wasn't for you, I would have been a goner. <laughs> you can't say that about the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> you betcha! You made a mess, man! Blood and guts everywhere! It's not the first time I've made Schweinbrock without cooking! Haha! <laughs> this sounds like an interesting TV show. Or movie. 